Hi, welcome back to Book Chats from Lonsdale Public Library. Um, I'm very excited about this week because I'm doing picture books. Um, it's probably not a secret if you know me at all that I love picture books. When they come into the library, I have a tendency to read them before we even put them on the shelves. Um, specifically, these are what we call everyday diversity. Um, and what that means is so we have lots of very serious books about history and people from different areas and heroic figures, and those are all cool. Um, but we also want kids to be exposed to, to other kids who aren't exactly like them, uh, especially in a town like this where people tend to sort of look the same, sort of eat the same sort of things. Um, it's cool for them to read books about kids who maybe wear different clothes or celebrate different holidays or eat different foods, but are still like them in all the important ways. They love their families and they love to sing and dance and um, they love to read books. Um, this particular set um, are aimed at sort of three to seven year olds, so it's younger kids. Uh, picture books can actually cover a pretty diverse uh, a range of ages, you know, they're from the very littles up to um, well into grade school. Some of the some of the picture books have wonderful text, and um, so don't be afraid to check them out, no matter what your age. So, make sure I covered everything I wanted to. We're going to start with a book called Fry Bread, a Native American Family Story, by Kevin Noble Maillard. I hope I said that right. Um, and it's, uh, if you don't know what fry bread is, you are missing out. Um, but it's a, it's a staple food in a lot of Native American families. And in this particular book, it's, it's just a, a fun, filled with joy story about a, a Native American grandma who is making fry bread. And she is helped by a diverse group of kids who um, learn to love it. And it's about um, what fry bread means and how you experience it. So it's, it's um, the smell and the sound and the history. Um, and it's also, you know, yummy. Uh, it has a little end note about the uh, author's experience. And it has his grandma's recipe. So if you want to try it for yourself, I encourage you to do that. Next, I'm going to talk about... Luna Loves Library Day by Joseph Coelho. So obviously, I'm going to love this book because um, it's about how, how much fun there is to be had at the library. Um, and it starts with Luna uh, packing up a bag for the day with the help of her mother, who's white, and she goes and meets her dad at the library, and dad is black. Um, so thus, everyday diversity. Um, but it's really, it's a story about how she and her dad explore the library and they find all sorts of fun stuff that Luna's into, dad may not be into, like bugs, which I'm on dad's side, but it's cool that Luna's into them. Um, and then they read a fairy story, which is actually included in the middle of the book. That's kind of a fun, different little thing called The Troll King and the Mermaid Queen. And that's a story about the a father and mother who don't live together anymore, but still love their daughter. So obviously that's relevant to Luna. Um, so it's a very touching book, very cute illustrations, highly recommended. Next, we're going to have one that's just a pure delight. It's called I Got Rhythm by Connie Schofield Morrison. It's a very fast moving book. It's, as you might expect, it's got a rhythm all the way through. The young African-American star um, uses all of her senses to, to get the rhythm going. She sees it and she hears it and she starts to move. And before you know it, she's got the whole neighborhood snapping their fingers and shaking their hips. Um, it's a great one for reading out loud because every page has uh, a different sound. I... Sing the rhythm with my mouth, ooh la la. It's got hip hop and tip tap and beat bop. Um, I would not maybe recommend it as a bedtime story because it'll get you up moving. 
next, we're going to do a couple extras because picture books are quick. Uh, this one is called No Kimchi For Me by Aram Kim. Um, if you don't know, you probably do, but just in case, kimchi is a uh, Korean dish. It's a spicy cabbage dish that um, a lot of Koreans have at every meal. Um, it can be a little bit of an acquired taste, so I'll, it's maybe a little spicy for some of us. <laughs> um, but it's basically the national dish of South Korea, so obviously there's something good about it. And this is about young Yumi, who loves everything that her grandma makes, except for the kimchi. Um, so her brothers, as brothers do, make fun of her and say it's because she's a baby. Um, so she tries, she experiments, she's like determined to, to love kimchi. So she tries it with different things, um, which is not very successful. The chocolate chip cookie kimchi, not the best plan ever. But grandma comes to the rescue by making a kimchi pancake uh, that everybody loves. And um, I'm going to give you a chance to look at these illustrations too because they're just charming. And again, this one has a recipe at the end if you want to give a kimchi pancake a shot. And finally, we're going to talk about Don't Touch My Hair by Sherry Miller. Um, Aria has, as you can see, magnificent hair, and she loves it, and so does everybody else. But the problem is people love it so much that they want to touch it everywhere she goes, which is not to her liking. And so there's actually some very funny um, adventures as she goes to extremes to try to escape all these hair touchers. Uh, but the lesson is, you know, what she really needs to do is just to stand up and say, hey, don't touch my hair without my permission. And, you know, so it's a, it's a light, fun story, but that's a, an important message for kids to learn about, you know, that they need to be empowered to set their own personal boundaries because some kids love to be hugged and some kids don't love to be hugged. And it's important that they learn that they have the right to make that decision and that you have to respect it when your friend says, don't touch my hair, that they have the right to say that and you have to listen to them. So hopefully these have inspired you to come and check out our wonderful picture book um, collection in the library. A um, couple of quick reminders. It is Halloween week. So uh, come in Friday or Saturday to pick up your uh, party in a bag. We'll have um, pre-readers, readers, and teens and tweens, and you'll get coloring pages, activity sheets, a craft, some, a prize or two, and some candy. Uh, we're also voting on Lonsdale's favorite candy. The two finalists are Snickers and Twix. They are neck and neck, so if you have a favorite, uh, give them a vote. And if you come and do it in the library, you can take a sample home. And also, we've got a uh, You Decide adventure online that you can play and uh, have a good time. All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.